What is up guys? Welcome to driving lesson one in the learning to drive series. This is the cockpit drill. The cockpit drill or setting up the car is the first thing that you'll do with a driving instructor on your driving lessons or the first thing that you should do if you're learning with friends and family. In this learning to drive series, I'm going to be throwing loads of acronyms and mnemonics at you to help you remember the procedures and the order that you should do things. The first one is DSSSM. That stands for doors, seat, steering wheel, seat belt and then mirrors. Once you've done all of those things, the car is set up and you're ready to drive. So let's start with doors. You as the driver are responsible for the whole car while it's on the road. That includes the doors being closed properly. If someone gets in your car and maybe they're young or they're not a driver themselves, they might close the doors like this. Feels closed, but actually it's not. If we go down the motorway at 70 miles an hour, that's gonna rattle and fly open. Pretty dangerous. And that could happen on the passenger side or in the back. So you need to make sure that all of your doors are closed properly. On most modern cars, you'll find that if the doors aren't closed properly, the car will let you know like this. Or if the doors aren't closed properly, the interior lights won't turn off. Like that. If you don't have a car that gives you those warnings, have a look in your mirrors to make sure that the doors are closed. You'll notice that the door, my door, isn't matching up with the door behind. So if we open it slightly and close it properly, it will match up perfectly. The last thing to say about doors is it's really important to know what's coming past you before you fully open the doors. So check the mirror, the road looks clear and I can open my door and jump out of the car. It's also a really good idea to tell and remind your passengers to look behind them before they open their doors. Side note, in high winds, a gust might catch the door and push it open further than you're expecting. So you might have heard of something called the Dutch reach. It's just a really fancy way of saying open the door with your other hand. So I'm gonna use my right hand for the latch and my left hand for the handle. If I push the door now and a gust of wind is catching it because my left hand is on the door handle, it can't blow open more than I was expecting. Doors, check. Next, let's move on to seat. The seat needs to be adjusted so that you can reach the pedals easily and comfortably. So the first thing that we need to do is adjust the rake. That's how far forwards or backwards the chair is. The seat won't move on its own in all cars. Underneath, there'll be a handle that you can pull up to release the seat. Hold the steering wheel with one hand and the lever with the other hand to keep it unlocked and move the seat backwards and forwards. So you know you've got it in the right place. My left foot should be able to press the clutch all the way down to the floor without stretching. My leg is overstretched and the clutch isn't reaching the floor. So let's pull forward a couple of clicks. That's much better. Couple more adjustments that you can make with a seat to get real comfy is the height of the seat. On your right, there should be a lever or a dial that adjusts the height of the seat. You can go down or up to get yourself in the best possible position to drive in. Ideally, you'll have your eyes in the middle of the windscreen so that you can see over the steering wheel and you're not too low down so you look like a Little old granny trying to peer over the top of the steering wheel. So let's get that perfect for me. Great, I can clearly see over the steering wheel, my eyes are in the middle of the windscreen and I'm not too close to the ceiling. So when I go over bumps, I won't smash the roof. Last thing that you can do with a seat is adjust the backrest. You want to be in a very comfortable position, again, because you might be driving for a long time, especially if you've got a two hour lesson. I don't want to be sitting up too much because that's going to get really uncomfortable but I don't want to be leaning back too far either because it's not nap time. So I'm going to raise the backrest up so it's in a nice, comfortable armchair position, a little bit more. But this really is down to personal preference. Do you want to sit a little bit further back to be more comfortable or do you want to sit a little bit further up to be more comfortable? That feels good for me. Side note, we have headrests in the car. That's not for <sighs> chilling out and relaxing on. The headrests are there to stop your neck hyperextending in the event of an accident. Hopefully you won't have any accidents or incidents on your driving lessons, whoever you're driving with, but just in case you need the headrest set properly. So to set the headrest properly, the middle of the headrest should be in line with my ears and eyes, basically the middle of my head. I think for me, it wants to go up a little bit. So I'm gonna push that up. There's the middle of the headrest. There's my ears and eyes, perfect. So to push the headrest up, you just push it. If you wanna push the headrest back down again though, there's a little button on the side 
which releases it and allows it to push back down again. Seats, done. Next, we are going to adjust this steering wheel. On all modern cars, this steering wheel is adjustable, so you can have it in the best position to help you drive more comfortably. For me, this steering wheel is too far out because my arm is locked in place. That's gonna get tiring after a little while of driving. So, underneath the steering wheel, there's a lever. We push that down, the steering wheel can pull out, in, and also it goes up and down. So I wanna get that to a position where I can see the instruments through the hole, I can comfortably see over the steering wheel, and the steering wheel's not too close to my knees so that when I turn corners, I don't bump my legs. So for me, there's a nice bend in my arm there. I can see the instruments through the hole, comfortably see over the steering wheel. I'm gonna hold this steering wheel with one hand and lock it back in place with the other, and then it's fixed. Steering wheel's done, that's nice and quick. Check in the box. Next, we move on to a seat belt. Now, seat belt might seem obvious, but ideally you'll grab it with your left hand. If you're in the driver's seat, pull it across your lap, run your right thumb all the way across it so that there's no kinks or twists, and then in it goes. It is really important to make sure that the seat belt doesn't have a kink or a twist in it. That's a pretty sharp edge. So if it's twisted and that's digging into you, when you have an accident and you lurch forward, the seatbelt locks so that you don't fly into the windscreen. If that sharp edge is locking into you and not the flat surface, that's going to be uncomfortable, painful, and let's not think about the rest. We have nearly completed our first lesson, the cockpit drill and setting up the car, but lastly, we're going to talk about mirrors. Your mirrors are your biggest safety feature. If you ask someone what the biggest safety feature of a car is, they'll normally say the airbags. Now, the airbags only save you once you've had a crash. If you're using the mirrors properly and you can see everybody around you, you're going to avoid having a crash in the first place. Of course, we can't account for other people's bad driving, which is why we do have airbags, locking seat belts, and loads of other safety features in the car. But if we're using the mirrors properly, we're going to be a lot safer on the road. So let's set them up properly. Let's start with the interior mirror. It's important to adjust the mirrors from your normal driving position. If you lean over, the picture in the mirror actually changes. So, stay where you normally would be while you're driving. Reach over with your thumb and finger because you don't want fingerprints on your mirror and adjust the mirror manually. Ideally, you want to see the whole of the back window, top and bottom framed. And if you've got it right, you'll see the passenger and your headrest in the bottom left and right corner. Next and lastly for this driving lesson, we are going to adjust the door mirrors. If you've got a modern car like me, you're gonna have electronic mirrors. Fancy. If you're in a slightly older car, you're gonna have manual mirrors, which means you've got to adjust them with a little stick in the corner. However you adjust your mirrors, you're going to need them set in the same way. So I'm gonna press the button to select the right mirror, and then I can use the arrows to adjust them. The way we want the mirrors to look, we need to see a little bit of the car behind us, not too much. We want to see more of the road than our shiny Mercedes, but we do need to see a little bit of it so we can reference how far away things are from us. Then we want the horizon of the road. So where the road ends, we want to be halfway up the mirror. Then houses, trees and sky on top of that. We're gonna do the exact same with the left mirror. So we've got a little bit of our car, the pavement goes up to halfway, then we've got the houses, trees, and sky on top of that. Perfect. Side note, if you're in an older car and you're adjusting your passenger door mirror manually, the lever is quite far away from you. So if you're on your own, which you shouldn't be if you don't have a full driving license, you can get your passenger to adjust it for you and tell them up a little bit, down a little bit, left a little bit, right a little bit. Or if you are on your own, you might have to take your seatbelt off, reach across, but then, from your normal driving position, check again to make sure that it's perfectly set. So, that's the first driving lesson. We've learnt the DSSSM cockpit drill, we've set the car up, and now it's ready for you to drive it away. So check out the next lesson, moving off and stopping. Thanks for watching.